Both autistics and non-autistics experience empathy. Autistics experience emotion-sharing empathy, and non-autistics experience body empathy. Mirror neuron system differences are behind the differences between autistic emotion-sharing empathy and non-autistic body empathy. The mirror neuron system acts differently in non-autistic brains than it does in autistic brains. So first, what are mirror neurons? Well, they're one of the most exciting discoveries of neuroscience. Basically, the mirror neuron system acts when we see others taking an action. The mirror neuron system gives us insight into social interactions. The mirror neuron system fires similarly when we observe others take actions as when we take those same actions ourselves. And it is also involved in other sophisticated thought processes and human behaviors. In 2012, Achara and Sukla wrote a paper called Mirror Neurons, Enigma of the Metaphysical Modular Brain, in which they make the argument that the mirror neuron shaped human civilization. Their conclusion reads, in its entirety, seriously, although the enigma of the human brain is unfathomable, but still, the indefatigable attempts made by the ever-aspiring cognitive neuroscientists has opened up a realm of metaphysical secrets in the mirror neuron modular brain that has shaped our civilization. What they're getting at is that the mirror neuron system's impact on socializing has shaped civilization because humans are a social species. And they're right, the human brain is unfathomable. In their abstract, they write, defects in the mirror neuron system are being linked to disorders like autism. They use the words defect and disorder, and those of us from neurodiverse families know better than anyone that they have good reasons for using those words. Autism is not easy for anyone, not for the autistics and not for their family members and loved ones. I spent my formative years pretty much literally being beaten up by a level one autistic older sister who was three years older than me and much bigger than me when I was very small, while I was being watched over by a level one autistic mom. And eventually, I took on the mother role, the caretaking role of my level one autistic little brother, who was only four years younger than me, because my mother was really having difficulties with all of the tasks associated with motherhood. There are good reasons why non-autistics choose the words defect and disorder. I had to learn how to manage a lot of really difficult social interactions from a very, very young age. And the way the family system worked one positive thing for me, at least, was that I had the neurology to at least somewhat be able to successfully manage it. My level one autistic siblings didn't have the neurological benefits that I did have. So I can't be realistic and also deny that I understand why, from a medical paradigm, we are using words like defect and disorder. Yet also, autism has evolved with us. The story of the evolution of our civilization includes these neurodiverse families, and I am a member of those neurodiverse families. I have neurodiversity in my genes, and I also believe that I am neurodiverse. We are all part of this biologically diverse human system. And I think that if we as a society want to get to a place where we have peace, we need to take on the challenge of making it possible for all neurologies to be socially viable within our society and to be appreciated and accepted for what they are and who the people are that have that identity. Anyway, once this hypothesis about the defects of the mirror neuron system being associated with autism came out, a flurry of mirror neuron system and autism studies were done, and they came up with many contradictory results, leaving the autism community quite confused about whether or not the mirror neuron system actually played a role in autism. 
it became known as the broken mirror neuron debate. So fortunately, in 2020, two researchers named Chan and Han published a meta-analysis of all of the different studies in order to give us a conclusive answer to the question about whether or not the mirror neuron system plays a role in autism. And if you don't know what a meta-analysis is, you should. Basically, a meta-analysis is like a study of studies. The researchers begin with a lit review, gathering all of the different studies together about one subject, in this case the subject of the association between the mirror neuron system and autism. Then they decide which studies had enough rigor to be included in their meta-analysis, getting rid of the studies that have less competent methodology, then aggregating the findings of all the studies together, working to eliminate confusion regarding different uses of the same language, like the word empathy, and then applying rigorous statistical methods to find the patterns of what all the studies mean together collectively. In this way, they get closer to an actual understanding of a phenomenon. Meta-analyses are where it's at. They can give us real answers because they aren't just one small group of researchers doing one small study, but they are collecting all of the data from the many studies and putting it together to see if there is a conclusion that can be drawn. And this is the way science works. Meta-analyses can get us past the confusion of things like the broken mirror neuron debate. So this is what Chan and Han concluded. The mirror neuron system is impaired in ASD. The abnormal activation patterns were found to be modulated by the nature of stimuli and age, which might explain the contradictory results from earlier studies on the broken mirror neuron debate. In other words, what they're saying is that the different kinds of stimuli that the different researchers used and the different age of the subjects across the many different studies made it look like there were contradictory results, but when they brought everything together, they got an answer. And that answer was that the mirror neuron system functions differently in autistics than in non-autistics. Yes, they also used the word impaired. And out of respect for my level one autistic friends and my level one autistic family members, I definitely choose to use the word differently. And I also believe that that's very true. The mirror neuron system of autistics functions differently than the mirror neuron system of non-autistics. And this accounts for the reason why autistics and non-autistics experience empathy differently. And also is why I use the term body empathy for what non-autistics experience and emotion sharing empathy for what autistics experience. And I want to be real. I want to be very honest about this. The mirror neuron system is functioning differently, and there is no way that I would trade my body empathy that I experience as a high body empathetic and that neurotypicals experience for emotion sharing empathy. And the reason why is because I see the distress in the level one autistics that I love, that I perceive to be associated with the fact that they are experiencing emotion sharing empathy instead of body empathy. And I can't help but be grateful that I have a brain that prevents me from having to experience that kind of distress. And I can say that and also acknowledge that if they understood the difference, they might choose body empathy over emotion sharing empathy and still use the word difficulties instead of choosing to use the word impaired. It is true that our brains function differently and the neuroimaging has demonstrated that and the meta-analyses have demonstrated that. I don't also need to frame the situation in a way that makes someone else's brain impaired and mine not impaired just because I can see that I experience less distress than they do. The point of all of this is to ease the burdens of neurodiverse families and part of easing that burden is making the decision to choose language that isn't labeling some members of our families as impaired or deficient or disordered and seeing all of us as competent, capable people working together to find solutions that will move us all forward positively. All of that said, 
for the sake of getting past the confusion, I really believe it's time to put the broken mirror neuron debate to the side. We have a meta-analysis that has given us conclusive results. Autistic brains and non-autistic brains have mirror neuron systems that are functioning differently. We experience empathy differently. We can see that behaviorally, and we can also see that in the neuroimaging studies. We have different brains.